For two weeks now, I've been making a series of videos that allows me to delve heavily into the Scream franchise to bring you guys some of the removed, deleted and alternate scenes that didn't manage to see the light of day. Most of this information is taken from original scripts, drafts and interviews with cast and crew who worked on the movie. So make sure you don't miss out on this awesome Scream trivia, be sure to hit subscribe and make sure you sign up for notifications so you don't miss a single update. Today's video is more of a discussion of sorts about some details I've been reading about a specific character from the Scream franchise. Now, since Scream 1996 and with the current resurgence of the franchise, there's an active community who are very open about the fact that they believe Stu Marker, who was a killer in Scream 1996, is actually alive. I'm very open about how I don't think Stu is alive personally, however, from my research, the draft readings and so forth I've been doing on this channel, it seems that is evidence to support that Stu remaining alive was something that Kevin Williamson originally intended on, and this goes way beyond the original draft for Scream 3. So before all this gets confusing, let me just explain something. So Kevin Williamson wrote the original Scream movie in 1996, and he submitted the script to Dimension Films with the intentions of making this movie a trilogy. Now from what I've heard, Kevin himself has been very vocal about how his trilogy submission occurred at a different time to when he submitted his first draft for Scream. The Weinstein brothers claim they accepted Scream with the constant notion that this was going to be a trilogy of movies. So Kevin Williamson then went back to his draft for Scream 1996 and begun some rewrites in the hopes of making the movie tie into a sequel or more so the future instalments he had planned. So let's forward the timeline here. When Scream 3 went into production, Kevin Williamson submitted his script for the movie. It's common knowledge what this movie was about, but very briefly, the plot took us back to Woodsboro as Sydney is stalked once again by a group of ghost faces who had dedicated their life to the character due to the Stab franchise. It would have been revealed in the climax that Stu Marker had survived his death in Scream 1996 and he was behind the entire thing. So what I'm going to do is with this video is basically add some fuel to this fire. I'm no believer that Stu is alive, but it seems Kevin absolutely corrected an element of the original draft to leave his fate somewhat open to discussion. I'm going to read you through Stu's final moments in the original draft of Scream 1996 to explain further, but it seemed that Stu was confirmed dead in the original draft, but that element was cut out. So this was Kevin's script way before he decided to make this a trilogy. So very briefly, the original draft actually had Randy Meeks take up a somewhat more heroic role as he joined Sydney in her fight against the killers. Randy was the one who faced off against Stu, while Sydney faced off against Billy. So without further ado, let's take a look at how Stu was originally written out of the movie. Randy manages to stand when a figure comes leaping at him, completely unexpected. It's Stu, barreling into him, they fall back into the living room. Sydney grabs the gun next to Billy and turns to the living room to find Randy and Stu rolling across the floor in a deadlock, fighting, both seriously injured. Sid tries to find aim when a hand grabs hold of Sydney's ankle, toppling her to the floor. Once again, she finds Billy on top of her. Randy and Stu pound at each other, beating and clawing on Sydney as she fights viciously, attacking with everything she's got. Randy is desperately trying to pry away from Stu. He grabs hold of the television set and tries to pull himself off the floor out of Stu's clutch. His hands find the top of the TV, the VCR. He yanks on it, gripping it with his hands, bringing it around with force crashing the VCR into Stu's head. Stu drops. So skipping ahead a little bit here. Billy and Stu lay face up, head to head. Sid and Gail move over them, staring down, Randy joins them. Sydney nudges their bodies, they both stir. Randy, careful, this is the moment when you think the killer is dead, but then he springs back to life for one last skirt. Sydney grabs the gun from Gail. Not this time, says Sydney. She positions her foot on Stu's chest and aims. This is for my mom, asshole. She shoots him in the forehead, a clean, and perfect shot. 
So, there's so much to take away from this original draft. Stu was originally attacked with a VCR, not a TV, which initially would have made this whole scenario easier to discuss. What's more, Sidney ensured his death by shooting him in the forehead, meaning in the original draft, Stu was 100% dead. Now, as I said earlier, Kevin went back and edited this death following his outline plan for the trilogy. So, in Kevin's mind, how was Stu going to appear in Scream 3 if he was clearly killed in this version? He obviously felt removing the bullet to the head and simply having that heavy 90s TV fall on him was enough to leave his fate open so he could return for a third instalment. What's interesting here is I've never had any major issues with Kevin's writing, but he clearly wanted Stu back in 3, which is the only reason this clean shot to the head was removed for Stu. But I'm just trying to understand how he would have explained this on screen. As I said, I'm no believer in Stu being alive. Even if it went ahead, I think it would have been stupid to explain. But it's interesting that Kevin removed this bullet shot to the head, when that would have secured Stu's death more than anything else really, if that was his intention for this character. So what are you all thinking about this? I just know this will get an interesting response. So thank you very much for watching guys, don't forget to like, share and subscribe and look out for more great Scream content on the way.